Hello, welcome, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this, the actual episode 11 of Fighter Jet Roundtable Tournament, after a short break for April Fool's Day. I'm sure none of you were actually fooled. Mommy Milkers. I am back here today with a very special guest, the one and only winner of Season 1 of Fighter Jet Roundtable. Say hello, ladies and gentlemen, to... Ace Verco. Did that make this episode 12 now? Uh, no, because the other one was April Fool's. Alright, I'll go submit for episode 13 or something like that. You have to build it first, Ace. Oh, come on. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get down to the watchtower and the round table and take a look at what we have in store for everybody today. And here we are back at the Watchtower after a very, very brief delay. We have two fantastic looking aircraft here. One, uh, a very classic, uh, very solid looking outline. The other, well, perhaps slightly unfamiliar uh, to some, but uh, nonetheless should be uh, very cool. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look down here first. First, we have the FA-18C Hornet sent in by Mirrors, uh, a new name in the competition, but obviously not a new person to making fighters in KSP. This actually looks really good. I mean, you can instantly tell it's an F-18. I do uh, quite like the P wings and colors, especially yeah. with this environment. It definitely fits. It definitely does. I was honestly surprised that uh, we were able to get the, uh, the coloration to be so close to the actual desert. I feel like that seeing in may... the hangar. Yeah. I'm seeing in the hangar, you weren't quite sure, but yeah, right now it's definitely. Oh yeah, well, which good is. Good job on that. Oh yeah, that's that's really cool. Kudos to that. That I can only imagine must have taken some actual annoying ass trial and error. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look how this baby is outfitted. We have uh, AIM 120Ds, AIM 9s, AIM 9Xs, gun which is actually a combination weapon group between a single GAU-22 and the basically 20 millimeter Vulcan in that actual cockpit, uh, as well as two Meteors and two Quams. So uh, from range, this thing's going to be pretty uh, pretty nasty. Um, of course, the I do believe the actual, FA, the actual Hornet was retired by the time the AIM-9X was actually a thing. And by the time, I'm assuming by the time the Meteor was a thing. And quams don't exist at all, except here. Um, also using Stardust's new Typhoon engines in their actual intended uh, intended role as, uh, well, as your main engines. Uh, the scary thing is they've just got little uh, 1k hit points there, so they, uh, could, they could be hurting. Uh, anything else uh, before we head over to uh, our next competitor there, Ace? I do quite like how the hard points look. It just feels right. Oh, yes. Okay, so look at this, guys. Okay, look at this. Yeah, it's not stealthy, but I mean, look at that. Those hard points mounting there, and then with... I don't know if you can see it down here with the uh, with the missile racks, just... Man, that is slick. I like the way giving it, it Just kind of giving the uh, stealth mode the finger right now. Oh, yeah, totally. That being said, let's go ahead and get over to uh, what this thing is going to be shooting at, or what it's going to be shooting at it. And over here, sent in by still relative newcomer Kilted Dragon, is the NEDF Defiant Mark II. I said this thing had a somewhat familiar looking uh, silhouette. Uh, what do you think that looks like, Ace? I had can't quite put it together right now, so I think it's up to you. Okay, looks a lot like the uh, YF-23. Black ah, Widow 2. Um, not identical or exact, but it looks pretty close. The overall shape of the aircraft, uh, it's got the uh, kind of closest one we've got to the actual cockpit of the YF-23 would be the SU-57 cockpit. Uh, due to the shaping, you've got the, uh, the kind of delta wings there. 
You've got the combo uh, elevons and tail surfaces there, the universal control surfaces looking pretty cool. Um, that being said, it has, well, it has a kind of a fascinating choice for the missile loadout. It's got your typical aim nines um, and meteors, and for super close range, it has quams, which should prove to be an interesting fight. I'm not sure if that one actually had quams or not. Uh, actually, I think it did. Who might? Either way, uh, but, uh, what I'm really interested in right here is uh, the GSH-32s. Um, these are a gun that I don't think we've actually had used yet. Main reason is I, these, uh, I don't think they have explosive ammunition. Uh, every th other- uh, The two version don't doesn't have explosive. But I have seen the uh, Gish one. Oh yeah, they've got those. Barrel version. That yes, one we have. have mass. This does this not. Kind of interesting. It's uh basically it doesn't have burst mass. Um, and, but it is firing armor-piercing slugs. Uh, potentially. I guess it's so. I guess it could be somewhat of a cross between a normal gun and a uh, pulse laser. It could be. Based on after... how it's working. We'll have to see how that actually stands up. Uh, that being said, this craft definitely looks a lot stealthier than the traditional looking uh, F-18, but we will have to see. Good luck to both our competitors. Let's go ahead and get these birds into the sky. Kaka! And we're back for round one between these fighters. Let's go ahead and start that competition, get them into the air. So just based off of taking a look at uh, everything, uh, what do you think is going to happen, Ace? Uh, honestly, they seem to be somewhat similar when it comes to speed. Yeah, the, well, we both know that you can set the takeoff speed to whatever the hell you want in the configs, yeah. but, you know. It seems the acceleration seems to be relatively similar. Yeah, it could be. The Defiance seem pretty, uh, pretty speedy. Of course, that could be due to the fact that they are running twin F-119 turbofan engines from the B-9 pack, which I tweaked myself to bring up to competition spec. Um, and uh, that being said, they have a lot of oomph, but the Hornets are being powered by the Typhoon engines, which were put together by Stardust, and they're also very capable. So it will be, uh, it'll be fascinating to see how those aircraft actually measure up. And there's a little bit of lag as the uh, competition officially starts. The Defiance and the Hornets turning in to face one another. Uh, Defiance kind of stalling mid-air almost and immediately getting off their missiles. Uh, meteors being launched first uh, at long range, as you do. Now streaking across the midfield space, flying over the watchtower. Looks like uh, the Defiant seems to have a pretty, uh, pretty Spartan missile complement. Uh, at least when it comes to uh, how many missiles per target. Well, if anything, the ability to have stealth in the first place definitely is helping it with getting that missiles off first. Very true. Uh, that being said, first missiles have definitely fired, and uh, let's go ahead and. Slip on go. over here to the Hornets. Take a look at what is going on over here. I'll go ahead and close off the weapons bay for now, just to give us a little more room on the screen. Always nice. And uh, maybe zoom out on the plane itself, but then zoom in on the target. Actually, surprisingly maneuverable aircraft. Uh, but then again, I mean, you'll look at it. It seems like it should be fairly capable of doing that. That being said, it doesn't look like uh, that's... The Typhoons don't appear to have any kind of engine gimbal. Uh, I don't know if that's by design or if that's by tweak. I believe they're... Oh, that's actually... That's uh, oop, and we have our first hit, oop. Meteor, hitting the Hornet. That's gonna hurt. Ooh, Defiance now getting hit. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. The Hornet's actually the managing video. to hit the Defiance. Oh, that Defiance. Range boxing match with missiles. <laughs> yep, that, uh, that Defiant. Uh, is gone! <laughs> Quams! Quams and meteors hampering and smashing the Defiance. Guns coming in too. I've never really guessed that the 
Cloud 22 and the 20 mil would be working so well together. Yeah. Now, there might be a bit of a difference in velocity of the shells, but that seems to be working real good. Yeah, but again, shell velocity is kind of interesting. It also means you might potentially have more bullets actually striking the target. That being said, uh, the uh, Defiant not looking so good here. Engine's completely gone. Still got its GSHs out and a single Meteor. Now we're actually oh, seeing some of the drawback and of the... Uh, that thing turns well it, for what it is. Yeah, it does. It actually does. Uh, that being said, it does have Sylph Canards for the tail surfaces, so... Uh, huh. Could have something to do with it. That being said, I think it's safe to say here that uh, the Defiant is definitely going down for the first round. Let's and get into as always, NMP cockpits. Indeed. Boingy boingy. Let's go ahead and get into round two. And here we are for round two between these fighters. Start competition and get them into the air. We saw a pretty, pretty quick upset from the F-18 uh, smashing the Defiant. I, I, I mean, I did kind of see that coming. I, I will admit, my main regret that I wish I would have been able to see is uh, I want to see how effective those GSH guns are uh, without the, uh, without the high explosive. So here we go, competition now starting again. Guarantee those Defiants are gonna get their missiles off first. Um, once again, kind of hanging in the sky. Uh, when we actually do get down there after the first missiles have been dropped, uh, we will uh, actually watch from the Defiance perspective this time, just to get a little bit of a, little bit of a change up there. Kaz Kerman looking um, like he's having Vietnam War flashbacks. That being said, we're going to click onto the Defiant here, and zoom on in. Now I've now noticed, uh, despite the fact that it's in full afterburner, it... I don't know, I mean it is closing, but... Hmm. One chunky aircraft. It does actually seem quite stable. Which, I mean, is... I mean, I guess it's a good thing. It is still far distance. I, I guess we won't be able to actually see its maneuverability until we get into close range. And yeah, it's just dodging missiles up top. Indeed. Make this a little smaller here, just so, uh... Again, more room for everything. Oh! Ooh. AIM-120D exploding at long range. We had a... Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm hearing some very, very scary things. Um, well, oh. I think that's gonna be about it for the Defiant, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I guess we're gonna... Well, I guess they really wanted to just hammer that in. Yep, air superiority indeed. Well, I guess we're off to see our next two combatants. And here we are for the second group of fighters that are going to be slugging it out to see who gets to fight for a spot in the Big 16. We have the DF-13E Ares Liberator sent in by none other than Jimmy. Yes, the, the man, the myth, the legend himself, maker of spear jets and hoster of season 5 of Fighter Jet Showdown, whatever the fuck that thing is. And over here, we have the SU-46 Ragnarok sent in by Call Sign Blaze. This is uh, another new, um, basically it is a new, more or less a new face going up against a uh, grizzled war veteran. So let's go ahead and uh, start taking a look at what we've got here. First things first, uh, what does this plane look like to you, uh, Ace? To be honest, it almost looks like just another... It reminds me of the Spiritet, but with a tail. <laughs> Actually, uh, it looks like a Liberator to me. A bit bigger than the, the Liberator. Um, the real Liberator, not the Goblin Shark. <laughs> the actual 
old school badass liberator. It looks a lot just... like that. <laughs> In fact, got so fed up with the mouth that they have to make their own liberators. Yeah. <laughs> even still, you look at it. I mean, it's even got the liberator tail. Kinda. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is these three. Uh, we call that a Liberator tail. So, let's go ahead and take a look at its armament. Uh, it's got uh, Meteors, PL-10s, and Pulse Lasers. I love how easy that is just to go down. Why just, just, like, like, can't things, just, instead of having like 18 different armaments, it's like, just easy. Alright, so we got Meteors, oh. 4, PL-10s, 6, and Pulse Lasers looking to chew through its enemies, and a sleek, stealthy, black color scheme. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Those field ends seem to be, uh... If it ever goes against something with a good amount of stealth, well, it's a bit high, a bit harder to hide heat, mm. to say the least. Yeah. The one thing that's a little odd about it is it's got this kind of chunky, uh, like, four fuselage here, and then it kind of tapers down a little bit. It's uh, very... Mm. It's very, uh, very, uh, very noticeable. That being said, another thing that's uh, kind of noticeable is the fact that, uh, much like Stardust, these uh, little uh, Pegasus engines are actually being used. Um, and Jimmy has put six of them, meaning this aircraft, this, this thing, has eight engines. Just want to let that sink in. Eight. Friggin' engines. That being said, it does look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see what it's going to be shooting at. And on the other side, the other team, Team B, we have the SU-46 Ragnarok, again sent in by Call Sign Blaze. Um, you can't really see it, but he's actually using the Mobius uh, emblem on his aircraft, which uh, I thought was kind of cool. Uh, again, can't see it, but uh, it's there in spirit, I'm sure. That being said, it does actually look a lot like the SU-47, although not quite. There are there are some differences. But I, I'm actually digging the uh, kind of light gray uh, color scheme there. Uh, what do you think, eh? It's in with the white fuselage and the stock-ish coloring parts. I thought so, too. It's just nice and neutral. It is. Uh, it looks pretty slick. Honestly, uh, it looks... Actually, it looks heavy. Um, what are these? Uh, oh, we've got all moving control surfaces back here, which I guess you would just expect Ooh. from uh, SU-47. Um, big ol' uh, Saturn afterburning turbofans or afterburning jets there. Uh, all together, a fairly nice looking, uh, nice looking, very traditional, sleek uh, jet, which uh, definitely does not look as stealthy as the uh, Liberator over there or the Ares Liberator. Um, I'm also digging the red wingtips, honestly. I, I think that's a nice design decision. Looks very, uh, very cool. It's always nice to see a little trim paneling and coloring and such. <laughs> nice colored wingtips remind me a lot of some other Sukhoi designs. Yep. That being said, over here, uh, we've got uh, AIM-9s, uh, Mica IRs, and clams for its close range, uh, main close range stuff. Doesn't even bother with any major radar missiles other than the quams itself. So that is a, that is definitely a significant choice. Uh, over here, you can see that we have uh, the Vulcan guns. There's actually three of them. Uh, there's one there, there's one hiding over here, and there's another one hiding over here. Uh, so that's gonna be just fine. On the other hand though, um, it says it has zero ammo left. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, infinite ammunition is on, but I still don't think it's going to do it if it doesn't have at least an ammo box. Uh, well. I think with the missiles, it seems like this might be an almost perfect matchup. You have stealth, and you have the missile setup specifically set to counter stealth. Indeed. But, uh... Will the choice not to put ammunition in the guns actually play a part? I guess we'll have to see. I'll see if VDR may actually address that recently. <laughs> I, I, I doubt it. And we're gonna go ahead and get these things into the air for the first fight between them. Hope 
hopefully. And yes, before anybody throws a fit, I did go and put an ammo box in the Ragnaroks. I did everybody a favor. And after a whole hell of a lot of waiting that I will definitely trim out in editing, they have begun to fight. Competition has started uh, Liberators dropping long-range meteor missiles first. Well, the Ares. To be fair, the Ares Liberators. But I'm probably going to end up calling them the Liberators. Which, uh, if this plane wins the episode, is going to make uh, the 16 round uh, kind of interesting. <laughs> Tons of meteors now flying toward the Ragnaroks. Uh, I would be very surprised if... Um, those planes uh, at the speeds they seem to be going are able to evade the meteors, but we will see. Oh, and sure Ooh. enough, called it, direct hit to the Ragnarok. And uh, only one hit so far. Seems to still be in the Ooh. air. Yeah, could be. 85 parts for the first Ragnarok, 27 for the second. Those meteors. Let's go ahead and uh, get down to the Ragnarok over here. See how this one is, I believe, the most damaged. Oh, Ooh. not much of an aircraft at all remaining for that. Let's go ahead and get to this one. And not much an aircraft, period. Uh, all right. This is the only remaining uh, fighter for the enemy side. Flying through the bay field with his own friend. Evangelini, uh, going very quickly. Um, it's definitely no. It's. At that kind of speed for missiles, I would be very surprised if it's able to pull out. It does fire some uh, IR missiles, though. It could get lucky somehow and manage to actually get a kill, but it it's so slow, and s speed is... There it goes. PL-10, absolutely eradicating the Ragnarok. Man, uh, the God of War just beat the shit out of the Viking apocalypse. And we are back for round two. Let's hope these aircraft can, um, well, well, let's hope the Ragnarok has a better showing than last, uh, last time. They, uh, definitely need to keep that speed up to avoid, uh, avoid missiles. But, uh, all things considered, they, they seem to bleed a lot of speed. Not, uh, not always a good thing. How effective that would be in a close-range dogfight. Well, considering that um, I believe the well, the liberators, uh, the area's liberators, are not actually packing quams. So uh, even still, they're packing pulse laser, which in a close range, if you're not moving very quickly, those pulse lasers are going to chew you up. I mean, uh, just based uh, without having seen their uh, their you know handling capabilities, I definitely, you know, I, it could have been anybody's fight, but now that I've seen it, I would I would put money on the Liberators uh, going on to the finals here. I damn you! Well, that's frustrating. Sucks to be the Ragnarok. But, um, we're gonna go through with that. I already put guns, I put ammunition in your guns for you. I don't know what else you want me to do. If you can't get your aircraft to fly effectively over the terrain, that's on you. That being said, in typical fashion, we are going to go ahead and, uh, watch the Ragnarok here as it puts around at half the speed of smell. And the Liberator liberates the runtime very quickly, dealing with the solo Ragnarok and sending us headfirst into the finals. And here we are for the finals of episode 11. We have the FA-18C Hornet versus the DF-13E Ares Liberator. Which one of these two spectacular...
spectacular looking aircraft are going to make it and win. Well, let's get them into the air. Well, and see find how out. well they fought in the opening matches, and this might actually be quite cool fight. I'm gonna actually put my money, uh, if I had to guess, uh, I would uh, I would bet on the uh, Ares Liberators. Not that I think the Hornets are bad by any means, but I do happen to know that well, those Liberators are pretty nasty. I mean, I do have to say, if those F-18s get in close, then might be quite an interesting fight. And right you are, and the competition starts. Uh, we now have the first turn. Very quickly, the Liberators have already spun around and are now coming in. Hornets still in the process, and just like I thought, already tossing those Meteor Missiles out to uh, try and beat the crap out of the Hornets. Um, let's see how uh, the Ares handles shaking the Hornet's nest. That being said, looks like the uh, Liberators, uh, the Ares there has, well, uh, looks like it has at least two missiles per target. Uh, but on a long cooldown, uh, Meteors now heading in. They still have half of their missile loadout, or missile of their half of their Meteor loadout left uh, as they close the distance there. Hornets, I'm afraid to say it, but for the moment at least, seem to be uh, evading the Meteor Missiles quite nicely, which means we could get into the gunfights. Always cool. Return Missiles going out? Yep, indeed. And uh, let's let's go ahead and watch these Liberators uh, kind of oh, do no. their thing. Those Liberators. Damn the amount of missiles they're pumping out. Well, they are the heavier aircraft out of this pair, which uh, leads me to believe they are... Ooh! Hornet gets hit by a Meteor and blapped out of the sky. Close range uh, meteor hit there, uh, definitely doing a lot of damage. Um, you can see the confetti out in front there. The uh, that is definitely a choice to do. Ooh, uh, and we have. Oh ho ho! Oh ho ho! Oh, oh snap! This could be. Oh. Could we potentially see uh, liberator to keep flying? Could we potentially see something uh, fascinating here? We'll have to see. F-18 turning in uh, quite nicely onto the back of that liberator, switching to gun or its weapon groups. Oh, jousting with a pulse laser craft, deadly and scary. Got to and say, definitely something about dumping all your missiles at once. You don't quite have as many missiles for later on. That is true. That is very true. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that was a bad move. Oh, oh, oh. I uh, guess I underestimated its maneuverability. That could have been bad. One shot from the ooh, oh, oh. Ooh. And pulse lasers, they're showing their capability when it comes to dealing damage up close. Round one of the finals is going to the Ares Liberator. And here we are for round two. We have a Liberator victory heading into this fight so far. Uh, the current rating is 1-0 in favor of the Liberator. Well, the Ares Liberator. <laughs> Still looks more like a Liberator than, uh, than the Ark Liberator. Gotta say. You know, I, I, for all the shit we give Jimmy over, that, over the Spearjet and everything, that, uh... That plane, uh, the Ares Liberator, does look pretty cool. Not gonna lie. I mean, he's been here for quite a while. He's been here longer than me. Yeah. Been here for quite a while, and... Well, I guess it's starting to really show. Yep. Indeed. Not gonna lie. Kinda think it would be cool to see, uh... The Hornets take one of these, so it goes three fights. Not gonna lie. I'd like to see that. I'd love to see just... We want to close range dogfight, that'd be so cool. And a textbook competition start between these two aircraft. Uh, Hornets uh, turning, but Liberators turning faster. The Ares Liberators, to be precise. And once more, getting those Meteor Missiles off first. We did wind up watching the, uh, the Ares previously, 
So let's go ahead and watch the Hornets this time. Let's watch uh, those gorgeous, gorgeous aircraft. Stealth so. really starting to uh, pull its weight here. Yeah, uh, definitely. Now, it doesn't, you know, mean that your aircraft is going to be better at flying around, per se, but I will say that stealth, uh, stealth works great when it comes to who fires first, and ultimately, uh, fire first capability when it comes to missiles is uh, what determines whether or not your aircraft gets put on the offensive or the defensive uh, during the long-distance merge. Ooh, uh oh, ooh, that. Ooh, that's cool. All right, Hornet's actually getting very close to the terrain, enough to make the butthole I pucker. The missiles get. I saw one of the missiles fly to win the terrain. I guess that's one way to deal with missiles. That is indeed. That was uh, a tactic that we actually saw the uh, the Inferno uh, pulling off quite nicely. Android's aircraft. Uh, what was the first one I remember seeing? Ooh, Ares Liberator getting hit. Ooh. By a missile, that is not good by any means. That was the one. The Let's go ahead and switch to this thing. Oh, that. Oh, it is down there. and out. All it is Lord. is a cockpit. Ares Liberator over there and uh, being uh, being with tradition. We're now getting into close range. Those pulse lasers are friggin' deadly. Those pulse lasers are deadly, but those guns are. As well. Potentially, they could be. They are Vulcans, though, and Vulcans, as we know, are kind of... Well, they're a little bit like tickle cannons. Comparatively. I honestly would still go with two GAU-22s or uh, BK-27s or something over the uh, Vulcans. And to be fair, hey. this is running a single GAU-22 and a single Vulcan. So, uh... Yeah, four guns on. Or guns on the rear of this uh, liberator here. You're really uh, not it is a, a, a very nice. It is a, yes, it is a very nice looking two v one fight at the moment. Ooh, and we've lost some parts. Liberator uh, starting to get parts stripped off it from those guns. It looks like it's starting to lose stability in the back. It's almost gaining maneuverability. It could be could also be the firing angle on the Hornet's weapons. They could have a wider firing arc, which means that, uh... Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, we had a, a terrain avoidance kicking in as, uh... Now, see, here, here's something. The, uh... The Liberators should be very capable of turning quite hard, and as we can see, it, it's turning quite significantly. But, at the same time, it's trying to dodge two fighters at the same time and it's having issues getting its pulse lasers to bear, even though it should be the superior close range damage dealer. Yeah, those. I do have to say, those uh, control services getting knocked down in back is making it more maneuverable. Uh, well, maybe a little. Uh, as we know, the Liberator tail is more about redundancy than anything else, uh, as well as extra turn capability. That being said, it has taken. Oh, whoa! Okay. A bit of friendly fire there. That was that was close. Very close. And see, here's another thing I'm beginning to notice. Those those tail surfaces are being uh, they're slowly being stripped off. But again, with these two aircraft on the tail of the Ares Liberator here, uh. They, they're working double time, but still haven't been able to finally deal a finishing blow. And I do think that is partially doing, you know, due to the fact that they've really only got a single, uh... Oh, that was a, an interesting maneuver. Um, it's only got the single Vulcan and the GAU-22. That being said, if you take enough hits in the butt long enough, uh, well, you're gonna have some problems. Beautiful turn in there by the Hornet as the uh, Liberator, uh, the Ares Liberator, is still able to function. It does have those uh, tiny little Pegasus engines acting, uh, well, at least keeping it in the air and keeping it moving. It remains to be seen whether or not the uh, Hornets are going to be able to make 
uh, make do. Really, it's just a test of whether or not you can get your guns on. Get lucky. Oh, uh, and speaking of that, the luck ran out. Yep. Pulse lasers from the Liberator. Uh, you know, I, I can't call it yet. I would, but it's still firing those pulse lasers, which means if it got a lucky hit somehow, it could still wind up winning. I want to call it, but I just... Not be all that useful, I mean, even though the guns might not be the most useful thing in the world, just seeing a hail of bullets flying into a plane and seeing it being chased for a good couple of minutes definitely adds to it. Yep, and Liberator factor. finally hits ground. There's no way it's going to be able to uh, get any shots on target. That means we are now one to one. We're heading into round three. Ooh. All right, here we are for round three. Both of these planes have one win in their corner. Regardless of what happens, this will be the final fight. Who is going to win? Is it going to be the Hornet or is it going to be the Ares Liberator? I'm excited. Stay tuned. <laughs> and we'll find out. See some real cool dog fights. Hell yeah. And the competition for the final round of episode 11 has begun. Yes, 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 yes. Fight! The Ares Liberator does definitely have the long-range initial advantage. It will get those meteors off first, which will force the Hornets into a defensive position. Uh, one did get picked off last time, but they uh, did die to try and evade the missile fire last time. Potentially bringing in uh, ground clutter. That being said, let's see if they are doing that right now. We will actually zoom down to basically ground level here. Uh, they're mostly staying straight at the moment. Uh, they might be losing a little bit of altitude. Oh, as they get in, they're actually diving quite heavily. They could be diving for the terrain. Um, just like they did before. Hornet here getting pretty close. Let's go ahead and actually, I, I want to watch from that just because it's so close to the terrain. And that's such a cool thing. Once again, the only other time I've seen that really be a thing was when, um... We had the, uh, what was it again? The, uh, the Infernos doing that. It's still cool. Ooh, Hornet gets two parts damage due to missile. Oh, Ooh. damn, long range meteor slapping that Hornet out of the sky. This one only had two, well, looks like it had a little more than two parts damage uh, due to missile, to be honest. Um, it still has missiles, let's see what happens. It could still potentially get kills. Uh, well, uh oh. Well, the uh, Liberator right here coming in with pulse lasers. Locking in on the target. Oh, oh, oh. Parts being shed quite readily. There. Missile flying by. I think it's pretty safe to say uh, the victor uh, at this point. Pulse lasers coming in and just cleaning house. There is no more F 18. That being said, oh, the Navy's gonna have to buy some more. Eh. Well, I mean, that was just the Hornet. That wasn't the Super Hornet. <laughs> that being said, ladies and gentlemen, your winner for episode 11 of Fighter Jet Roundtable Tournament is the Ares Liberator, sent in by none other than Jimmy. I hope everybody enjoyed uh, watching. Thank you for joining me today, Ace. It was a pleasure to have you on. I do have to say, congrats to everyone else who's in this episode. Putting up a hell of a show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Very nice. And uh, a nice, quick, uh, easy one on the runtime. That being said, I have been Kaz. Ace has been Ace. And until next time, happy building and happy blasting.